In this lesson, we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations. And again, this is something we did already a long time ago. We've reviewed it again already, but it's one of those things that's real important. And in your future math classes, your teachers and any test that you have to take or anything like that is going to assume you can solve quadratics consistently. And by the time you get to like calculus or anything, quickly. Um, right now, I'm not too worried about speed, but you should be able to solve like any quadratic that I put in front of you. All right, so again, what does a quadratic equation mean? A right, quadratic just means that x squared is your highest power of x. All right, so we can always rewrite a quadratic equation in ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, so basically when we're doing problems in class, you are doing a problem on a test or something, and you see that x squared, and think, okay, this is a quadratic. What are my strategies for solving this? All right, because it's going to be different than solving a linear. It's going to be different than solving an exponential that might look like, oops, like this. It's going to be different than solving a logarithm. That looks like this. All right, every type of equation has a slightly different strategy. So when you see this x squared, okay, what are my strategies to solve a quadratic? All right, so strategy one is factoring. All right, so I'm going to rearrange the equation. So zero is on one side. This is really important because we're using the zero product property. Not necessarily you know the name, but getting zero on one side is really important. Then the quadratic that you have, you're going to factor. All right, so we've reviewed factoring. And then the reason we factor is because we set kind of factors equal to zero we can split this up to say this is factor one and this is factor two we can split it up to where factor one equals zero or factor two equals zero all right then you get two smaller equations that are a lot simpler to solve than the full quadratic all right so here's an example again i look at this equation i see x squared i'm like okay most of the time when we're solving something with x squared i want to get zero on one side so i'm going to subtract three from both sides I want to get that zero over here. Now I look at it and say, okay, well, let me try to factor. So if I'm going to factor this, I have to add to 7 and multiply to negative 18. Right, the numbers I'm going to do that are positive 9 and negative 2. All right, so you could do this all in the equation. I kind of like to just go to the side and kind of factor away from everything else I'm trying to do. All right, I do the splitting method. Factor out of 3x. I'm doing this quickly because we've already reviewed how to factor, just pull out the negative and factor down 2x plus 3 times 3x minus 1. I just did the factored form of this quadratic, so now I go back to my equation and instead of writing the full quadratic, I write the factored form. And there's multiple reasons we care about factoring quadratics, but for most of the class that we've been learning and all the information we've been learning, the main reason we care about factoring is that now I can take this complicated expression with a quadratic and I can just separate it out in the two much simpler equations. All right, and the reason we have to do this first step of getting zero here is this kind of splitting up only works if you have zero. All right, but now I can solve these much simpler equations. I subtract three and I divide by two. I add one, divide by three. All right, so now I get my two answers. All right, so that's the way you factor to solve a quadratic. All right, the first step, real important, get zero on one side. I right, use your splitting method to factor, and then you set each of those factors equal to zero. You make simpler equations that you can solve. All right, so here's one to factor on your own, but I messed up. Let's make this x squared equals 5x plus 14. All right, so change this problem because the one I accidentally gave you could not be factored. Uh, so go ahead and solve this one uh, on your own, and I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. All right, so in this new problem, again, I'm trying to factor, so I want to get zero on one side, so I subtract 5x and I subtract 14. Uh, most of you will probably subtract the x squared. I personally like to keep the x squared positive, because that's pretty much always the way I like to factor. So I move these things over here. There's nothing wrong with doing the other way, so to be more careful with negatives. Um, here, if you're comfortable with your factoring shortcuts, you just find those two numbers that work and you can put them in here. If not, you have to do kind of the splitting method in the middle here. But the reason we factor is because then we can split it up into two smaller equations and then we just add seven, subtract two to get our answers. All right, so strategy two is what happens if like I can't figure out how to factor it. So either it's not possible to factor, like that one problem I accidentally had before I changed the problem on the last slide, or you just can't figure it out. Like you can't figure out what those two numbers that work are. Well, your next strategy is using the quadratic formula. So you're still going to get zero on one side. That's really what you should do first because you should try to factor first. Right, so zero should pretty much always be on one side. 
I really make sure you write it in the correct order. So a lot of times people accidentally flip these two and you get A and B wrong or something like that. All right, but X squared, X number. Always write it in that order so you have A, B, and C in the correct order. All right, we're gonna plug it into the quadratic formula. This is something you have to have memorized. So as much as I want to give you guys formula cards, um, in upper level math, there's certain things that like they expect you to do so quickly um, and expect you to have memorized and the quadratic form is one of them. So I don't want to give you the option of having a quadratic form there. I want to make sure you memorize this because it's going to be useful for any math class you take um, anywhere else. And then pretty much there, it's just simplifying. I right, mainly making sure you simplify your square root. I right, one thing, if we're just talking about like a general solution to an equation, um, we can have imaginary slash complex answers where we have that I. So if you get a square root of like negative four, that simplifies the square root of four is two, the square root of the negative is I. All right, so here's a quick example. All right, 2x squared equals 3x minus 1. I want to subtract this stuff over. All right, making sure you're careful with negatives. All right, most people try to do this too quickly and they put like a negative one here, but remember you have to add one to both sides to get that over there. You have to subtract 3x from both sides. And again, I've wrote in the correct order x squared term, x term, number term. And now that I have this, I could try to factor it. Um, I actually think this one can be factored, but we're doing the quadratic formula strategy, so we're going to do it that way. That's right, so a quadratic formula. Make sure you have the whole thing memorized correctly. Negative b. b is negative 3, so the negatives are going to cancel. Negative 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 1 all over 2 times 2. And 3. All right, this is the most common mistake I see students make is negative 3 squared. A lot of you just put it in your calculator, like negative 3 squared. You type it like that, and your calculator says that's negative 9. So you put negative 9 here. But it's not negative 3 squared. It's negative 3 squared. And when you square this negative, it becomes positive. So this will always be a positive number at that first part. Because you square anything, it becomes positive. And again, we want to simplify that square root as much as possible. The square root of 1 is really nice. It's just 1. And some people will get here and they'll just leave their final answer like um, that. But when you can completely get rid of the square root, you can actually keep going a little bit farther. I could do, remember this, plus or minus is just a shortcut for the reading two answers. So one answer is 3 plus 1 over 4. Just 4 over 4 is 1. My other answer is 3 minus 1 over 4. Just 2 over 4. Just 1 half. So make sure if you can keep going, you simplify as much as possible. All right, here's another one. X squared. The first thing I want to do is subtract this 4x. Right, a lot of people will write it like this because you subtracted the 4x to the other side. And that's fine. But before you do the quadratic formula, I want you to rewrite it in the correct order. So now when I do the quadratic formula, I know b is negative 4. I know a is 1, and I know c is 6. Uh, 4 times 6 is 24. Over 2. And I make sure you're careful with your negative. So now when I'm simplifying this, I want to simplify the square as much as possible. So there's two things. First, I see this negative 1. I automatically know that's going to be an i outside the square root. And then remember when you're simplifying squares, you're looking for those perfect squares. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on. You're looking for those perfect squares, and 4 divides 8. And the square root of 4 is 2. That right, says so 4 passes through the square root and becomes a 2. I, I am 100% uh, fine with this answer. You get 100% on the tests or whatever if you listen there but if you look at these three terms these three terms one of them is kind of complicated has all this extra stuff but it's still even there's still that two in front so I could simplify this by writing this as two plus minus i squared two dividing all these numbers by two um, to get a simpler answer all right so here's one you can try on your own all right, I'll show you the answer for this one in three two one all right, and this is the final answer you get, square root of 17, not divisible by any perfect squares, so you just leave it like that. All right, so here's a summary. You can always rely on the quadratic formula since factoring sometimes doesn't work. So if you do a quadratic formula for every problem, I'm not going to 
yelled at you. Uh, in my opinion, it's just more steps. So if I can factor, I would factor first. All right, and then make sure to fully simplify your answer. There's actually one thing I didn't include in this video, which is another strategy. Sometimes you'll see an x squared and you won't see an x term. So pretty much every single problem we've done, there's been an x term. If there's not an x term, you also have another option. All right, you can still do a quadratic form, you can still factor this. Um, but you also have another option of trying to solve it with square roots. So you could add the nine to the other side. You could divide by four. And then I can take the square root of both sides because square roots and squares cancel. Yeah, the plus or minus, all right, this is the one reason why square roots is a little bit harder just because a lot of times students forget. It's not harder, but people just make this mistake a lot of forgetting the plus or minus in front of their answer, square root of nine and square root of four. All right, so this is also another option. You can only do this method um, when there's not that X term. So it's a very limited time you can do it, but this is probably the quickest way when you can do it correctly. Um, make sure you're completely getting the X squared by itself first before you do square roots and make sure you're not forgetting that plus or minus. Right. But again, you can always solve it a different way um, using factoring of quadratic formula because it's still a quadratic. You can still do that method.